Hi class, this section is going to be on 7.1 and um, the idea of this section is it's estimating a population proportion. And what is that? It's like our key idea is we're going to be presented with methods for using a sample proportion to make inferences about the population proportion. So for example, if we say, oh, I don't know, 50% of the people in Sheridan own more than one acre. We are taking maybe a sample of everyone in Sheridan, and then we're gonna get that number that, that I don't remember what I said, 50%. We're gonna get that number from the sample, and we're gonna apply that to the full population. So the idea is you're gonna take a sample of people and um, out of the whole. So when I go to look at this type of problem, you're gonna be given like, maybe there's 20 out of 100 people that like this. Um, you're gonna be given some kind of a proportion. A proportion's just a fraction. You could also be given that proportion, so if I did the 20 out of 100, you could be given that proportion as a percent, 20%. I divided those, moved the decimal. Um, I could be given the decimal or the probability. So decimal and probability are the same. They're both 0.2. So 20%, 0.2. So we're going to be given this, this number or this percent or probability out of or um, from the sample, and we're gonna use that to estimate something about the whole. All right, so we have a couple things we're gonna learn about. So we have something called our point estimate. This is gonna be p hat, that's just your sample proportion. Okay? So it's not the full population proportion, it's the samples. So we're gonna let p be the full population proportion, and we're gonna let p hat be that sample you come up with. And a confidence interval is um, a sample proportion. Um, we're used to construct an interval to estimate the true value of the population proportion. Let me say that again. We can use a sample proportion to construct an interval to estimate the true value of a population proportion. Goodness gracious, what do we mean by that? Well, if I say, out of everyone who's taken my class, the grades are between a 60% and an 80%, maybe I say 90% of the people, okay? So I am 95% confident from my sample that everyone who takes my class would be between those two numbers. Okay, so I'm like confident at a certain level that the true populations between two numbers and we base that off of a sample, okay? That's a confidence interval. We use, to find our confidence interval and to use this point estimate, um, this p hat, we have to know our confidence level, and that is the little uh, alpha and how confident we are about something. So, So when we go in, this is something we've been doing. We've been doing confidence levels. We go in, we use the normal area in StatCrunch, and we estimate our Z, okay? And when we see this, our Z, this really should have Z, and then we have our confidence level divided by two. It's like a two-tail, and it's representing the top right portion. So we have to do the between on StatCrunch, and we're representing that right portion. I think on my video it shows the left, which is the opposite. <laughs> okay, so some general ones that we use all the time. These are just a Z statistic. Um, at 90%, it's 1.645. 95 is 1.96. 99, a lot of people use 2.58 or 2.575, um, either way. I would take a minute and write those down. Those are the most common percents, and I've already calculated those z-scores, that, that z-value for you, and it's called a critical value. And in this textbook, they really use that, that symbol right here, the z with the alpha to um, divided by two. Okay, so let's put a little bit of this together and we'll keep going here. If I say I have a confidence interval, 
that goes from 0 0.405 to 0.455. So I'm saying P is greater than this number and P is less than this number. Always read from the middle to go both ways. So P is between these two. This is a confidence interval. How did I find it? I found a sample and I, I found the confidence interval and I'm using that now to predict something about the true actual population, right? So from this, I could say, and we'll just say this is at a 95% confidence level, which it does make a difference, but we'll, we'll look at, when we look at the formula, that'll show up a little more. We are 95% confident that the interval from 0 0.405 to 4.55 contains the true population. So whatever the heck I'm talking about, everybody in the real population will be between those two numbers. And I am 95% confident that they will be. So if I'm 95% confident, everyone in my class will be between a 60, oh, I should say a 90, between a 60 and a 90. Okay, that's, you know, another example. All right. So another thing I wanna make sure you get in your notes is just this notation. So we've already said some of these. So we know P is the population. P hat is the sample. N always is your sample size. E is our margin of error. Um, what our margin of error is, how far am I off? Okay, we'll look at that as well. And then we have that critical value as well. So pause the video and write those down. Okay, so we, in order to do a population proportion, we have to have three requirements. That's, that is we would have had to have had a simple random sample and the conditions for the binomial distribution are satisfied. That's more in detail in there. Um, I'm gonna give you most of your problems already have all these requirements met, but I still want you to be aware if I'm in the real world and I am coming up with a problem I wanna use this for, these three things have to be sat, um, satisfied. So you might have to look that up. Okay, the third thing is you have to have at least five successes and at least five failures. That means the number of sample size times your P or Q have to be bigger than five. What am I saying? You need to have a little bit bigger sample size. And P is our population proportion. Q is one, I thought I wrote that down there. Q is equal to one minus P. Okay, it's like if I say 30% are for something, then 70% are against EQ. That's where those are. That's what they stand for. And they're in a lot of our formulas. Okay, so I'm going to show in SatCrunch a couple things. First thing I want to show is what if the critical value is not one of the three I gave you? Let's remind you how to find that critical value. So I'm going to go into SatCrunch. And this one said, um, I want to find the critical value for a two-tailed, that top right percent, for 77%. So remember to go to calculators, you're going to go to normal. We need the between. Okay, so we're between two numbers, and we want it to be between 0.77. Okay, and we want the top proportion part. So this is the number we're looking for. So 1.2004. Okay, there you go. So again, what did I do? I went to stat again, I went to calculators, normal, and between, and I put in the percent I'm looking for. So I can put in that 95% and see that 1.96 that we wrote down earlier, or the uh, 0.99, that gives me the 2.578. Um, so that's how we're getting that little bitty percent right here, okay? This is the critical value for that. All right, so what is the margin of error? Let me bounce back to here. So what is the margin of error? So we just did the confidence interval. We wrote that down there. Okay, we got that at 77%, it's 1.2004. And that's just in case it's not one of those three values we had, at least we'll be able to find. Okay, so 
what is the margin of error? It is the difference between the actual and the estimate. Okay, that's our error. It can be found by subtracting the confidence intervals and dividing by two. So the margin of error goes both directions from the middle. So our confidence interval is here and here at the ends. Um, and my margin of error is, is halfway across. So if all the way across is my confidence interval, then I can take those two numbers, I could subtract them and divide it by two. And that would give me that halfway across. Okay. Or we have a formula for it. The formula is to take your critical value times your PQ divided by N in a square root. Okay. So we have a formula and we can use our confidence interval as well. All right, so if I have this confidence interval right here, what is the margin of error? All right, what do I do? If I have the confidence interval, it's just 10 minus five divided by two. Oh, what's 10 minus five divided by two? It's gonna be 2.5. So our margin of error is 2.5. Okay, so this question's asking a little something different, but I wanted to point out the margin of error first. This question says, what if you want to write your confidence interval in the form of p hat plus or minus e? What was p hat? p hat is our sample proportion, which we can't see either, but we can get this from our confidence interval as well. It is the average of these. So add them, divide, and that is going to give me my p hat. So I can look at my confidence interval and get my p hat and my estimate, um, my margin of error really easily. Then I could write this in the form that they like, which is your proportion plus or minus the 2.5. Okay. So in the middle is your sample proportion. Out a little, same distance up a little. That's our confidence interval. Halfway across is the margin of error. Okay, you see the start to see the relationships. Okay, what if we're asked to find a sample proportion, the point estimate? Oops, there we go. So if I say I have a pool of a hundred, that's not a hundred, a thousand one hundred and eleven people with five hundred and ten who said yes. I have no idea to what, but they said yes. Use a ninety-five percent confidence level. And first thing I want to find. Oops, I showed my answer a little is my p hat, find that sample proportion. Okay, so for part A, our sample proportion is just x out of your total. So five, 10 out of 100, 1,111. You could divide them, you can leave them like that. Okay, that is your population proportion, or excuse me, sample proportion. It's not the full population, it's just your sample. Now this many out of this many was in my sample. What if I asked for the margin of error? All right, how am I gonna find that? Well, I could use my formula, okay? I don't have a confidence interval, which I'll show you how to find on StatCrunch, and you could do it that way too. I could use the formula. We know at 95%, we have a critical value of 1.96. We found our point estimate, our, our sample proportion to be 0.459. So we can take one minus that, and that would give us our Q. We times those, divide by the 111, and take the square root, and that will give me my margin of error. Halfway across, okay? What if I wanted to find the confidence interval? Well, that's halfway across. I can take that plus that, that minus that, and that will give me my confidence interval. So what did I do? Let's write it out with the formula. The p hat minus the, the error and the plus the error on both sides is gonna end up giving me 0.43 and 0.488. What do I say? I say I am 95% confident because that was our um, confidence level. So I'm 95% confident that the true population is between those two numbers. Okay, so I used a sample to 
to estimate about the true population. Okay, so let's look at this one on StatCrunch. So, um, boom, boom, boom. go back to my StatCrunch here. So what we're gonna do here is this is all proportion. So when we go to stat, we have a proportion stat. And this one is a one sample because um, we have one sample and we have a summary. So our summary is that we had 510 successes out of 1111. You can do a hypothesis test. We're getting there next chapter. Um, and we could do a confidence interval. We had 95 on this one and we can hit compute and look what it gives us. It gives us the lower limit and the upper limit of our confidence interval, which is exactly what we found. Um, and it gave us the sample proportion here. Okay, so what did I do again? I went to stat, proportion, one sample with summary because I was already given the data and I put in my information, I did my confidence interval because that's what we're doing and it found my confidence interval for me. Okay, pretty easy by hand, pretty easy on the calculator, totally up to you. Maybe try it half with one way, half with the other. Okay, so you're finding a confidence interval on all of what we're doing for this section. Um, and I think this is good enough. And then you can look at the other videos if you need more help with finding your confidence intervals. Good luck on this section.